Hi, I'm Rachel. Today we're at Depot Sheffield and I'm going to be showing you how to approach comp boulders. Competition climbing is slightly different to what you would usually find in your local wall. There's a lot of bigger moves, lots of volume, slopers, harder things that you might not have come across before and I'm going to help you work through those. I'm going to be doing a few different boulders. I've already done a warm up so that I'm ready for it and I'm going to do maybe four or five that are going to get harder as we go along. As I'm doing that, I'm going to walk you through what my thought processes are and how I'm approaching each boulder. So the first one I'm going to try is this orange one here behind me. And the first thing I want to do, because it's on a slab, is I want to consider what shoes I've got on. I've gone for some softer shoes because I'm going to be stepping on two volumes at the start that are pretty flat and I need to be able to get as much shoe rubber on as possible. This is going to help me to keep my hips in and keep the momentum going without having to slip off my feet as I do it. The next thing I'm seeing on it is that there's a big gap between the holds, so I'm assuming that it's a jump. For that, I'm going to make sure that I try and get my hips up as much as possible, but sometimes it's tricky when you're on those sketchier feet, you might slip back a little bit, so I'll take some time to explore that. And then finishing up, it's just some pretty tenuous feet, so I need to know that I control myself as much as possible. So I've kind of read through and tried to get a rough idea of what I'm going to do and now I'm just going to give it a go and see how I get on. So on these boulders are slightly different to what you might find on the regular boulders. Rather than just having two starting handholds, there's actually four points that you have for your start and that's two hands and two feet. Technically I can start this any way I want, so if I wanted to start in a handstand with my both hands on this and two feet touching here, I could do. I could start with one hand up, one hand down, but logically for this one I'm going to pull on on these two holds and step two feet there before I can move anywhere else. The next one I'm going to try is this red one over here. Now this one's quite contrasting to the one I've just been on because it's on an overhang and the holds are a lot more friendly for my hands but maybe less so for my feet. The first thing that I'm seeing is that there's three holds in line for the start, which I'm assuming is one of those is a toe hook because it's a big volume in line with what looks like my left hand. That means I'm going to have to use a toe hook to come over and then from there the feet kind of run out after having quite a cluster of them so I'm assuming there's some sort of dynamic movement into this maybe a jump maybe a bit of a hop across not really sure but it looks like because those holds are friendlier for my hands it is going to be quite reliant on something a bit more strenuous and then the top looks fairly steady again with some bigger holds so maybe some thuggier dynamic moves again and we'll see how it goes. So the next one I'm going to try is this green one here and this is definitely baffling me a little bit. There's a lot of options for holds but none of them are really that good at the start. There's two volumes that are sort of opposing each other in a sort of parallel manner which makes me think that I've got to press between them and that means it's going to be quite hard to keep the tension through my foot and strenuous to keep the tension through my arm and then it looks like some sort of dynamic movement over it as the hand that you're going to first is bad but the second one is quite good. So that's making me think there's some sort of flick over there. And then for the top, there's not that many feet. And the feet that are there, they're not very good. They're quite slippy. So again, a lot on the hands and quite a lot of strenuous movement and probably moving fairly quickly again. So we'll see how it goes. So confused. <laughs> hmm. It's hard. Uh, <laughs> this hold that I'm trying to use is not very good, and I'm struggling to get my weight going through this foot without it just sliding off. So I'm trying to figure out a way to get my hips underneath it so that I can move on to it. Oh, 
God, it's very strenuous on your core. <laughs> so sometimes when I'm trying comp boulders, I won't always go from the start each time. If I was in a competition, obviously I'd be limited to that, but since I'm in the learning process, I might try it from a few moves in or try it individually, and that way I can get a better understanding of what the movement actually needs from me. Sensing my shoes might not be the best. <laughs> That's so hard because I'm putting my thumb in the screw hole, which I'm sure is not how you're meant to do it. I'm sure you're just meant to pam, but I'm uh, thumbing the screw hole because that's allowed. So in a competition, you're allowed anything that's used to attach something to a surface, but not allowed anything that's used to attach something else to the surface you're on. So that means bolt holes, because you're using that to put another hold onto this, you can't use, but screw holes, because that's to put this on something else, are allowed. On this climb, there also happens to be down climb jugs, but I am going to use those as working jugs. And that's basically me climbing onto them to pull into individual moves again and try and get past it if I'm struggling on doing one move or one move's really hard and I don't want to do it loads to tire myself out. I'll just grab on these and then try the top half of the route. <laughs> I'm now going to try this black one. It looks a bit more straightforward, but definitely more physical. So to start with, I'm kind of going into two undercuts, which means I need to try and step really high because they're quite high off the ground. There's going to be a lot of biceps involved to kind of shuffle over and get my right hand up. And then I'm going to do, I think, I'm going to do an ninja kick, which is basically swinging one leg to flick up. And then that next hold looks pretty bad. So I'm going to have to make sure that I squeeze and hit it right in order to then get a heel on and do the top section. A big part of comp climbing is actually the time limit. So today I'm just sort of having a go, having as many attempts as I want, not really limiting myself to how much I actually work it out, but if this was in a competition and I'd maybe only have five minutes or I'd only have five attempts to actually have a go at these boulders. So today would be more of an explore session, but if I was going to try and progress to actually doing some competitions, I'd start to narrow it down. I'd limit myself to how long I'm allowed to work out the climb. And then again, further try and limit myself by how many attempts I can actually have on each climb as well. So on this go, I'm going to try and move my foot further up because I'm not quite getting the reach for this jump, which is probably due to a lack of strength, but I'm stood currently quite low on this foothold. I'm going to try and move my foot a bit higher so I've got more room to swing. I appear to not be getting any closer. <laughs> I think my wrist is just like really limiting how much I can actually pull on this one. Should I just go and cheat it? Should I just pull on the jug? And... <laughs> 
yeah, I'll just do half a jump, grab the jug, and then jump to it and be like, whoa. <laughs> um, so apparently if you get a toe hook on the left and match like I thought, you can get your right foot up onto the other one and push across. But I'm also quite bad at toe hooks, so I'm not sure if it's going to be any easier for me. <laughs> Oh, it didn't work at all. <laughs> yeah, no, I still can't do it. <laughs> Too weak on a sloper. So I'm going to try this green one next, which looks a lot more technical than the ones that I've just been on. It's quite vertical, slightly overhanging, um, and again, on some slopers. So I'm gonna have to be quite precise about my body movements on it. So far, it looks like a toe hook start again because there's this hold over to the left, which I definitely can't span. So I'm gonna have to put a toe on there. That's gonna help me move across the first sloper. And then it looks like there's gonna be some interesting stuff with my feet with these sort of three smaller footholds there. So I'm gonna have to I think bump them up maybe with a heel in the big one and then it looks like I've got to get my foot nice and high on this middle one to do a big rock up for the end which will be slow and probably a bit scary. That was quite awkward, so I'm probably going to try and swap my feet lower and try and get a heel up in this one first and put the weight through that and then bump this one up afterwards. I can see on it as well there's a lot of uh, rubber marks on the bottom of this, which is making me think that a lot of people have slid their feet around here, so that kind of adds up. So I just didn't have my right foot far enough over and I could feel it as soon as I started to move. Just should have had it a little bit further over on that one. Give that a brush. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, subscribe to the channel and check out what we've got next.